Hey guys, it's Jason. In this video, I will be talking about my game art to code workflow, basically how I go from Blender to my engine, as well as my recent ECS rewrite, and some future projections for this project. I really hope you enjoy the video. I wanted to start making custom racetracks for my game, so basically uh, a terrain map with a racetrack on top of it. Um, and I picked up Blender, and it was very quite intuitive for me, as I already understand how meshes uh, in 3D are defined programmatically. So the options to build these meshes in Blender really made sense, uh, as well as to texture them, right? Um, so for example, you know, I started off with a uh, quad that was a plane, and so I had to subdivide it uh, into a lot of different smaller quads so that I could use uh, displacement tools and some quads would get displaced while others weren't wouldn't uh, and that would result in building like a hilly terrain uh, and then from here you know I added spline curves for the road uh, and then I used the array modifiers on some blender uh, objects to basically build the continuous road based off a spline curve uh, and then texture all of these individual um, objects with UVs so that I could apply the road texture, for example. Instead of learning Blender from scratch, I just kind of uh, threw myself into the deep end and searched up how to make 3D uh, maps and racetracks in Blender, and it really did just work out great. Not so fast though. It's not like I could just import these Blender models directly into the game seamlessly. I exported it to the mime type .obj, also known as the wavefront format, and I still had to do some work on the mesh before adding it into the game. In terms of the graphics, it was fully ready to go because I have a wavefront importer. However, for the chunking system, I still had to put it through my Python uh, map chunking tool that I built. This was built with libraries called Pi Vista and Pi Wavefront, which basically do all the heavy lifting of loading in the Wavefront object into Python, and then um, I do my chunking algorithm, and then I'm able to display all the chunks uh, in a like integrated like OpenGL viewer that's abstracted away from me by Pi Vista. So it was very very easy and quick just to build this whole thing in Python in like uh, like a couple hours. As of now, I've actually gone through a couple of rewrites. So my first rewrite was like purely object oriented and it, there was also a very clunky rendering system. So it was very CPU bound as render instructions had to be generated for like an agnostic game renderer to perform the GL binds and draw calls. Um, so there was like an overhead of creating render instructions per uh, game loop tick and also uh, the code turned into spaghetti real quick as uh, I built in like a terrain uh, physics chunking system um, and this had to be like in the in the main game loop beside render and update physics and at that high level abstraction I had to pull in uh, lower level objects that weren't supposed to be visible from that main game loop and so it really just broke the design as I had a game loop that would call render render would call the game renderer and then the game renderer would get the objects from uh, object renderer, which would then prepare the render instructions and then pass it all the way back up the chain. But then now with my terrain chunker, I had to basically say, hey, uh, I want to skip all that shit, go to the render uh, object renderer to get the entities. And then so it kind of just broke the pattern and it was just terrible. Um, so the second rewrite was actually much better. Um, I used the Entity Component System Design Pattern, or ECS for short, uh, and I like really streamlined the render pass as now I just have entities with render components attached to them, and then on the render pass it would just loop through all these uh, renderable entities and just ask, hey, draw yourself, draw yourself, draw yourself. So um, this also comes in with the single responsibility solid principle where um, one kind of class uh, is doing something very specific. So this was much better in the second rewrite because in the first one I just had these monolith simulation objects with um, like 
rendering stuff and then I had physics stuff all in one class. So that kind of got messy. Whereas here I just have a vehicle render component and then a vehicle physics component, right? Um, and the rendering pipeline was actually noticeably better as in the first rewrite, I had a lot of screen tearing, especially as I had uh, a lot of stuff open. And I, I guess the uh, program was being uh, scheduled amongst other programs a lot. So the CPU didn't have that much time to build these heavy render instructions. And then that would cause a lot of screen tearing visually. So that really got improved in the second rewrite. Um, this new system is much more extendable. Uh, I, ultra, I also introduced the scene manager um, where, you know, the scene manager, the scenes have specific game loops. So a game, a game scene will have a different game loop than a menu scene, for instance, um, as well as the just inherent uh, entity uh, and component design is just awesome. You know, you just have these entities with uh, components that are, you know, very extendable. And then um, based on what components you have, you can do specific logic on them in, you know, the specified system, right? So this just really, really works well, you know, for the game and simulation kind of applications. And I understand why um, everyone uses them. Thanks to your guys' comments and suggestions about how I could make the game appear better. Um, namely you, Todd, for suggesting the anisotropic filtering as well as messing around with the mipmap settings. I was really able to make textures at a further distance from the player, specifically from the camera, look much better. Um, as well as I added back the wheels and I corrected the, the textures and I'm still fiddling with it, but I basically got it back to um, the way it looked in the second rewrite. So I started implementing some very basic shading slash illumination techniques, uh, namely directional lighting, uh, where I just have a directional light vector um, that is dot product with all the vertices, normal uh, vectors. So based on that, there's an illumination score, right? Zero to one, um, zero being the darkest and one being the brightest or like, you know, the texture essentially. This directional lighting technique still has a lot of limitations as let's say I was rendering this hilly uh, terrain as I am. Um, hills in front of other hills won't be affected for illumination so you'll have a weird effect of having let's say a tall hill um, in front of a short hill and the short hill will still be fully illuminated at certain points. Um, another thing is my, wheel, my wheels are rotating, however, I'm not accounting for the transformation of the wheels in this um, like illumination calculation in the shader. So when the wheel rotates, um, it basically rotates from the top to the bottom of the mesh, and then the bottom of the mesh is uh, not illuminated, whereas the top is, and it just has this very unnatural um, effect of almost the illumination being stuck in place from the beginning. So at this point, I've created myself a pretty nice workflow to build custom racetrack maps, import them into the game, and yeah, just drive on them, right? Um, and I also got this newer ECS rewrite back up to par with my older version of the game. So now it's really about adding additional functionality onto the system and really seeing where it goes. I want to add better shadowing and just improve the shaders as well as add more uh, game functionality. So um, maybe pulling like collisions between the vehicle and the map that are like of high force, indicating maybe that the vehicle is going fast um, so that then I could maybe add like a explosion or uh, you know, a sound effect, like a big crash sound effect, um, as well as maybe add speed boosts um, or like checkpoints around the maps and just build this into a real uh, racing game with real racing functionality. Last thing for this devlog is that I want to thank you guys, the viewers, for such great comments and support on all of my videos. Um, it's crazy to think that this channel was just kind of uh, a random channel I was posting demos on for various projects and now we are at basically a thousand subscribers which is insane. So 
I just want to thank you guys again for your support. It means so much to me. And I really hope you guys have an awesome day. Bye.